The SP 500 was down 19.44% for the year 2022. And here's a question for you. If you had done something that you might call tactical asset allocation or something that you also might call sector rotation, would you have actually beat the market? What the? Some people use sector rotation to find the best sectors to invest in and then leverage those to beat the market. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you which sectors and sector ETFs that I like the most right now in 2023. And let's start by showing you why people do this. So here's a chart that I made with my own bare hands, people. I put a lot of effort into this video. I, I hope you appreciate it because it was a lot of work. So this is a chart that's showing the 11 different sectors of the S&P 500 index or the stock market. These are their returns over the past year of 2022. And as you can see, yellow is the S&P 500. That was the return that I talked about right in the start of this video, down about 19%. But look at this. The communications sector was down 38%. The consumer discretionary sector down 36%. So these were all down more than the S&P 500 index. But up here, we have the energy sector gaining 65% a huge, huge gain when over here, we're looking at negative 19% for the general market. And you're like, why didn't I just invest in energy? And so of course, it's not easy to just go ahead and invest in energy. But here's a question. What if you had invested in the top five sectors, energy, utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare and industrials, how would you have done? If you invested equally in the portfolio of those five different ETFs, instead of all the other ones that were down for the year, you'd have had a return of 9.75% and $100,000 would have grown to about $109,000, whereas if you invested in the S&P 500, you would have lost money. You would have had about $80,000 after you invested 100,000. So obviously, you would have done better if you picked the best sectors. However, super hard to figure out which sectors are gonna do the best. Obviously, the stock market is not the most rational thing at times, and it's not always very easy to figure out what's gonna happen. But in this video, I am going to show you which sectors I like the most and Let's start by explaining how different market cycles can affect what we think is going to happen within the different sectors of the stock market. Here's another chart. Isn't she beautiful? Come on, come on, credit to me. I made this chart, come on. Give, give, let me give myself some credit for a second, okay? This is a chart of the market cycles and sector performance. This isn't always gonna happen, but this is a general guide for us to use. Let's say at the market top, this is what happens. Communication, financials, and material sectors tend to kind of do well. And then as the bear market starts, the consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities are better. So what do we do? You might rotate out of, for example, communications, financials, and materials, and you might rotate into better sectors for a bear market, consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities. You go down, you get to the market bottom. Now it's consumer staples, comms, communication services, healthcare, utilities, and technology, right? And then you go back up to the bear market. You got materials, tech, industrials, consumer discretionary, energy, and real estate. This isn't going to happen at all times, right? This isn't like a cheat sheet that's going to work in every single market scenario. For example, we know that the last bull market, at least up until like, let's say 2020 time period, uh, energy did a terrible job. However, energy did a really good job during the bear market and it's not on this list, right? So we don't know what's always going to happen. That brings us to another thing. We have another underlying thing going on right now, and that is interest rates. Here's a chart from Charles Schwab. It shows us during times when interest rates rise, what happens to the different sectors of the stock market? Well, on the left side, these ones that are all above this line, this zero line, these all do well and they perform well when let's say the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rates, which currently we are in that time period. So we have energy, technology, financials, healthcare, communication services, we have utilities. These tend to do better when the Fed is hiking interest rates. However, these other ones don't do so well. Industrials don't do so well, consumer staples, materials don't do so well, consumer discretionary and real estate. And so the question is, do some of these actually might be good in a bear market. Do we still add them to a portfolio where we kind of overweight them? We're going to go over all this in a second. To put this on the context, though, I do want to show you what I do. I, I, I have a bunch of stuff that I do in my portfolio. So I call it the jack of all trades portfolio because it's not just one strategy. It's a bunch of different ones together. But this is how money goes into my portfolio, how I allocate money into it, right? And so I have individual stocks. I just buy based on value, valuations. I have this thing I do called Valmentum. And then this is this uh, this is sector rotation or tactical market recreation where I try to recreate a s and 500 type index using ETFs. This is what we're talking about today. So 25% of the portfolio that I try to add into the market is usually going into this type of strategy. And like I said, trying to recreate the S&P 500. And so why do we do that? Well, the S&P 500, as we know, has 11 different sectors, but they're not all the same weighting of the portfolio of the S&P 500. So if you look here at another graphic that I created, people, so tech, has 24% of the weighting, then financials, 14, consumer discretionary, 10. 
So for example, if we went and we wanted to, let's say, recreate the index and have everything that's in the index, we could decide the weightings of all of these different ones, or we could do more of a sector rotation type thing and we keep the ones we like and we get rid of the ones that we don't like, right? So for example, if you did like technology, which is 5% of the entire S&P 500 right now, what if you weighted that at 25% because you're super bullish on it, right? That would be a huge, huge tactical decision or maybe sector rotation type thing, but that'd be super overweight, right? And so to decide, or you would wanna decide at home if you decide to do this, how aggressive are you gonna be? Are you gonna decide like only a few sectors that you really like and you're gonna go super, super overweight in those? Are you just going to kind of say like instead of five percent energy i like energy i'm going to go with like eight percent right so something like that where you just overweight some of the ones that you like you underweight some of the ones you don't like equal weight some of the ones that you're not sure about you're neutral on and so on my channel i have done multiple videos over the past few years where i've actually talked about the sectors i like and i made portfolios of them and i shared them in a google drive and stuff like this, this is this year's and as you can see this is a timeline of the year 2022 january 16th i released a video and i linked it to my google spreadsheet and these were the results over the past year from January 16th to January 5th of 2023. We had 7.1% gain and that's not including dividends by the way because my spreadsheet doesn't track dividends. There's no dividends in it but whatever so it outperformed the S&P 500 sorry by 7.1%. So the return that I had was actually negative 10.4% but the S&P 500's was negative 17.4%. So I overperformed or I outperformed the index 7.1 percentage points. The reason why this doesn't add up is because there were some decimals and I rounded, whatever. Okay. So that's the deal with this. So let me show you where I did post this. This was the spreadsheet I used in the video that I made at the very start of last year. And this has been live for this whole time. There was a link to it in the description of that video. And I have the overweight sectors that I like and their subsequent ETFs that I prefer. So someone could watch this and go out and use these ETFs that I have here to kind of recreate the index however you want to. As you can see, 7.35% was the overperformance versus the S&P 500. Remember, uh, that thing that I made, that graphic was yesterday, so a little bit of a change, but you know, around the same. Then I went ahead and I ran this again, July 26th of last year. 0.4% was my outperformance versus the index, not including dividends. I was down 2.55% and the index was down 2.96%. So uh, whatever, let's say I pretty much matched the index in general. And then again, I ran it in September of 28th and I was up 1.7% versus the index and then a decline of 2.37% while the index was down 4.07%. So how did this all do? The first one was pretty good. I mean, I'm very happy with the performance of my first picks. If you could do that every year, you would have a phenomenal return over your lifetime. The other two here, you know, not as good, but it's also a shorter period of time. So time might tell. And again, remember, we're, this is sector rotation. So maybe you have a portfolio of this and then you rotate into this one and then you rotate into this one. And so you're, you're continuously changing up what's going on because you think the economic environment's changing which of course it is. So here we go. These are the sectors and the ETFs that I like for 2023. Check it out. We have overweight here on the top, these three. Healthcare is what I'm overweight. Energy is what I'm overweight. And financials, I am overweight. And these are the subsequent ETFs that I use to track these, ET these indexes. So for example, FHLC is going to track the healthcare sector. XLE is going to track the energy sector, RYF going to track the financial sector. However, RYF is not a pure financial sector ETF. It's actually equally weighted. So it's weighted differently than it is in the S&P 500. Over here, we have how much the S&P 500 is weighted in the different sectors. So 15% is in healthcare. I'm adding 25% of my portfolio to healthcare. So that means that I'm overweighting my portfolio 9.8%. So these are the overweight positionings, how overweight I am. These are the how neutral I am, basically. Of course, I'm neutral on this part where it's equal weight. So basically, we have technology, consumer staples, utilities, communications, I'm equal weighting. And then I'm not putting any money into these on the bottom. I'm being more aggressive this year. I'm gonna try my best to beat the market. So consumer discretionary, real estate, materials, industrials. Here's everything together. If you want to take a look, pause the video here. You can see on the top right, you have all the different sectors that do better when interest rates are rising. On the bottom, you have the little chart I made that shows the different cycles and how the sectors might perform. And then you have on the left, the sectors that I am choosing for my own portfolio. Now, if you want to know why I chose which ETFs for which sectors, you can watch this video here. And by the way, I got a disclaimer right here. Take a look at that and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.